Okay, hello YouTube, I'm Mary and I'm here to talk more about stripper life or being an exotic dancer. Um, I want to start out with um, just some things, corners or some things to be mindful of. Um, well, coming from me, from a person who's been doing this for eight years now, um, I just want to say it's important for people or women to know that you need to learn to separate you, your personality, from the character you're playing in the strip club. Because you are not a stripper. You're not a stripper all the time. I notice women walk around looking like a stripper 24-7. No, you can't be that. You can't be, like, I don't know how to put it into words slutty sexy sensual se like all day long like i'm someone's mom i can't be a stripper 24 7 and it's funny because there's another way to discover if someone's being pimped out because a lot of girls who have pimps and who are in maybe like sex trafficking or something they're 24 7 like in that that stripper mood they got the long lashes they got the hair did up nails constantly the sexy slutty clothes all day long you have to learn how to leave that at the club be a mom be a wife be a girlfriend separate those things okay i think that's important all right um just wanted to say that i'm just gonna start like this video is going to be about me talking about how I started out. I guess you could say this is some type of story time, but um, let's talk about how what made me go into becoming a stripper. Because someone asked me this recently, like, why did you? What made you become a stripper? Well, I got some notes here because I got a lot in my mind. When you're someone's mom, or your mom, or just uh, let's try to make it orderly. So um, let's say my life as a stripper. Okay, I started out when I was 24. And before that, what I was a CNA, um, working at a nursing home. I was hurting my back, but I got fired. I got fired for something stupid. Like an old lady said I didn't clean her her diaper fast enough or something. But like, I, I'm, and I have too much compassion. That industry is not for me. So I needed something fast, quick, and easy. I've always wanted to be a dancer because I like the idea of having money in your hand every day. So I decided to contact one of my friends who used to be a man, a supervisor of mine when I worked at Ruby Tuesdays and I said, hey, Charles, can you come with me? I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? And not only that, I did my research prior. So I did. I thought about it long and hard. I did my research. I read up on it. Plus, I had someone that I knew personally, <laughs> family member, <laughs> who did it prior to. So I, I had background information of pros and cons of what not to do already, all right, along with what I've read and put in my mind. So it's important to do your research. You not only just doing your research on clubs and like money and the industry, how much you're making, you want to do your research on human trafficking, uh, pimps, hoes, <laughs> and uh, signs and signals of how to determine what is what, okay? Body language. I, I'm pretty good at reading body language. I did research on re body language. All these things prior to. I probably had a million jobs before being an entertainer anyway. But at 24, my brain is developed. I'm not 17, 19, 21 starting out. So I'm able to rationalize better than someone who was in like 18 and 22. Um, so I have already know what it's like to work a full regular job like Target, Walmart type of jobs in the mall. So $50 a night at that time was like great. Okay, so I started out, my friend, I'm like, I'm interested in this. He came with me. I picked out, did research, called around, are you hiring? And, oh, yes, just come at this time, da 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 So the application felt the vibe out. Oh, he agreed. This is, this is a cool place to be, you know? Like, I, I think I can do this starting out. And, uh, oh, you, you want to start today or tomorrow? Oh, I'll start tomorrow, yeah. Just, I'm only here to fill it out after the application. You go in, they tell you what you need. They sit down with you, talk to you. 
show you around, give you a tour. Did that, right? And I'm like, I kind of felt like, oh, dirty in my underwear. I can't believe I'm doing this. Ew. Some of the girls actually made me feel gross when I first started. I'm like, ew, she's really dirty, hoary, like, slutty bitch. Oh, yuck. I really felt that way because I'm coming from a religious background. My dad was a preacher. Okay. All I know is the church. So coming from the church background and going to that, being very prudish. At that time, 24, I probably only slept with maybe total of four maybe three guys in my life so I, I like I don't really know a whole lot about sex and stuff still okay because I lost my virginity at 21 so I didn't know anything really this is still like I'm 24 at that time I'm just learning but I still had a lot of common sense and I was still professional so my first day I got there and the girls were trying to take me under their wings because the manager's like hey she's new take her under your wings show her around do this do that he's doing that I got lucky, unlike most girls in this industry. <clears throat> Thank God, being from North Carolina, I a lot of things like churches are usually like community, family type of churches. The club was like that. The club was like a family type of club. <laughs> they had a, a husband, wife, the daughter worked the bar. Like so, they treat everyone was like related, even the girls. So there, the, I remember having a manager. He was a guy, and what he said and how he trained me has stuck with me and helped me a lot. Uh, he always said, you want to cover up. You don't want to give it for free. He said, don't walk around here looking like a stripper. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Because the girls are like, no, put this on. He's putting like tiny slingshots on me and stuff like, no, you cover up. It's, you call, they call it stripper for a reason. Give them a show. You don't just walk up there and just, you know, so it took me time to learn all my skills and all that pole climbing and stuff. But I was pretty at the time. I had really short, straight uh hair really really short and um had a different look <clears throat> i used to always make sure like uh my breath was right i brought my toothbrush i didn't eat when i was there like um put on my deodor deodorant all the time touched up my makeup used my lashes i was doing a whole lot but i wasn't making that much money when it first started out okay but that's how i started out and then when I moved to Florida and I started going branching out to other clubs, that's when I really started making my real money. And um, they're a lot linear, lenient in uh, Florida, like as far as like dress code and rules and stuff. So that's when I started breaking money like this without trying. Like I still wasn't the, that great of a dancer. But um, oh, what else? That's how I got started dancing. I needed the money, okay? And it was it made it easy for me to move from one state to another because if you're an entertainer, you always have a job because you're an independent contractor. So that's how it went for me. And I, once you start, it's hard to stop. It's like an addiction almost because if you have money in your hand every day, why would you go back to waiting two weeks two three weeks just to get a paycheck that's so stupid you can make one check in one day <clears throat> you know um people with degrees can't make that much money and it's giving me freedom and even more as a mother now i have freedom if i had to wait for someone to make a decision for me to um sorry to uh, make money to set my schedule i mean like there's no way I would be able to survive um, and pay babysitters per day. Like, come on. Anyway, uh, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but there were some points I wanted to make in my videos. I really did. Some things that come up. Um, I did a video prior to this one about like what's in my stripper bag. And, um, oh yeah, there's some things that... um. You can do to perfect your stripping skills. And what I did, I took into account is to go and take classes, dance classes. I found a pole dancing class and the lady showed me how to really put on a show and not just shaking your ass. Like you use a whole experience. You want that's your entertainer. So she showed me how to walk on stage, how not to just be flipping and turning and doing all that crazy shit lead up to that point you know start out slow and take into account how long you've been how long your work hours 
Are you going to be there all day or are you going to be there for four hours? If you're going to be there for four hours, you can use up all your energy. But if you're going to be all day, you don't want to be flipping and turning all day long. You got 12 hours, 16 hours. Some girls work complete 24 hours depending on where you work. In Miami, those clubs is 24 hours, okay? If you're going to work 24 hours, why would you be flipping and turning and use all your energy up? Don't do that. Be smart, okay? I know the girls, you get too sidetracked and you want to show off your skills be like, I'm better. No, be mindful. It's the money. Okay, finesse. All right? You can do that. There's sometimes... I used to, I danced pregnant. Probably one of the times I made the most amount of money consistently in my life as an entertainer. I danced pregnant. No one knew I was at first. And when they found out I was, they were, they were like smitten. Okay. I didn't touch that pole. Okay. I could do pole tricks, but I didn't touch it. My body was really developed. So I guess my body set it from big boobs, hips, and booty getting big. And all I did just prance and just dance. Like, just shake it, just know how to put on a show, move your body, be sensual, be sexual. Like, I did it pregnant, and I was making probably way more than the average girl daily, okay? Consistently, all right? Can someone say that they can make $500 every day consistently for like three, four, five months? No, probably not, okay? But anyway, um, I took classes. I also took a belly dancing class. Took a belly dancing class, and then I started practicing on my own belly dancing. Okay, because it, it intrigues me. Like no one really does the know how to do the. It's it looks really good. I, I'm gonna do a video and show you some of my dance moves and stuff. Some of, some of my signature moves. Everyone's got those. I don't want to just do cliche stripper dances and pole work and stuff. Like, I tried to get a little creative with it, but um, just to stand out. You'll find, if you're really good, you'll find that there are some girls that cop your dance moves. That's how you know you're pretty good or you, you're doing something right, okay? If the girls are copying your moves. Um, um, something else that I started offering are massages. Some guys are like, oh, no, I don't want to dance. No, I'm like, you know, I went to massage school. These hands, like, let me, let me, you seem tense. Oh, that feels good. This guy's just like 40 bucks. Just to massage his hands and arm. Boom. Boom. Like, it's easy. Like, there, there was one time I made $300 in a day shift. With just doing, like, just kind of massaging guys' arms and shoulders. And I know the girls didn't see me going to the back room. I think I did one dance that day. And the manager was like, did you make any money? Mm, yep, I made $300. He was like, after that, he's like, did you make, he would always ask me, did you make any money today? Because I know you're not going to sit with the guy for free. I'm that girl. He knows. I'm not going to sit with the guy for free. Another point you girls need to know. Don't ever sit with the guy for more than 15 minutes. Your time is money. Don't just sit there smoking and drinking. Like, your time is money. You can do that after you made your goal. Don't just sit there. That's another thing that I've learned when I first started dancing. The manager said, 15 minutes tops. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Um, um What else am I going to talk about? Okay, so when you go to the club, you have to remember you're not you. My dance name is Jackson. I spell it J-A-X-X-O-N. Now, I always spell it to them, and so it's a conversation starter, okay? Or J-A-X-X-O-N, all right? Um, it's just a conversation. Jackson, that's a guy's name. Oh, Jackson, this sounds like a porn star name. Like, something like that, all right? Like, just be fun with your names, too, that you pick. Come on with some better names, though, for real. Like, some of these names, they're not even sexy. Like, you, the, there's a spirit attached to the names that you choose, okay? Had a lady in Miami tell me once. Uh, she was one of the house moms. She's like, how did, she was like, what's your name? You're new? I said, yeah. She's like, uh, uh, how do you, I was like, my name's Jackson. She's like, how do you spell it? I said, J-A-X-X-O-N. She says, you know, any... Businesses that have X's in them are very successful. Who knew? There's energy behind the names that you choose. So choose your names wisely. Okay? 
but um uh these are just things that i've all accumulated over the eight years of me dancing um I, I'll dance and then I'll stop. I'll dance and I'll stop. I take a break. You have to learn how to take a break. You can't just be dancing five years straight in a row or something. You would go mad. You would go mad seriously. I like to take my time, take breaks, uh, weeks off, months off. Like even this month, I, I haven't even been really in the month of November. I, haven't, I can count probably how many times I've gone to the club this month, okay? Um... But, um, I worked hard before, so I could take this much time off, too. Um, you want to secure your future, especially if you're a parent. You have to be smarter and wiser with your money. Don't just always spend your money on clothes. Of course, you, you're going invest to invest in yourself, but be wise when you're investing in yourself. I hear that a lot. A lot of girls are like, invest in yourself. Why invest? You can't invest in yourself if you're homeless. And you don't have a car to get to work. Handle the necessities first. And then worry about the image. Because if you, there are girls that just come off the streets and they don't have anything. And they're, they're dancing in their tennis shoes. I've seen that before. But by the end of that year, you better know they've got it together. Okay? So you have to think about, be smart. When you have a goal in mind, you know you want a car. Don't buy them new shoes. Wear some raggedy shoes while you dance. I'm sorry. You just got to suck it up sometimes. Let's be realistic. Yeah. Okay. I had this stripper friend. Oh Lord, this this might be a whole nother story time because okay, it's bike week. We have bike week here in Florida. Maybe she'll see this. I don't care because I told her already. All right. They have bike week, so people get all excited. Oh, I'm gonna make all this money. It's not guaranteed because every year and every season is different. All right. Sometimes you get a big crowd. Sometimes you get a cheap crowd. It depends. Well, she says she bought wasted. She spent like two hundred some dollars on an outfit, and then she never even made that two hundred back at all the whole week. When she knew she needed to buy a car, and I told her how to do it, where to go. All you needed was five hundred dollars down, and you're good. You drive off with the car. No, I said, but priorities first why would you do that with something that, that's not guaranteed that's two hundred dollars you could already had ready uh, to the side for your car all you needed was 300 wear what you got make it look good be smart be creative with the cheap stuff that you have before you're making the big money when you make a big money then you can start getting your nails done and all that stuff or do your nails yourself don't go to the nail salon they got gel nails now at walmart that you can polish your, your nails with Okay, or get a friend, get another stripper. A lot of these clubs have house moms. Okay, so just be smarter. You buy two hundred dollar lashes and shit, like, but you're not making two hundred back. That is stupid. Let's be smarter. Let's get Dave Ramsey on their ass. Be smarter. That's all I can say. Like this shit be making me mad because every girls always want to ride, <clears throat> and this happens. This is a whole nother story. Oh, mm -mm, I don't know if I should say that this might be controversial. A lot of the black girl strippers always need something. Not just from the guys, but from other girl strippers. If they think, see that you got your shit together, they want to come and bother you. Can you give me a ride? But they don't want to give you gas money. That has to stop. Okay, we got to do better. Seriously. Um... I'm I'm all for giving girls advice on how to be financially stable and be smarter with their money and how to do better in the club and how to get your money. But if I have a goal, my shoes, like when my shoes broke, I had some shoes break on me. All right. Um, I wore some little square heels like this until I was able to reach my savings goal to buy something more uh, beneficial in my life than some shoes okay i don't get that and i still have more money in my bank account now i still do i have everything i need everything i have is i own i own my home I own my car like be smarter okay be smarter i've seen girls sometimes the things that girls care about guys do not care about 
it may be different at a black club though because i've noticed black men they look at your nails they look at your toenails they look at if you got lashes on they look if your hair is right it's a cultural difference white men don't care about all of that shit all right and it's hard for white men to determine whether a black girl is in the right her hair is right or not because they don't know what black hair really supposed to look like okay so like think about just these are just things i'm throwing out there for you girls to think about just think about these things okay this is a little scattery but these are things that are in my mind i really wanted to share it with people but like come on we got to do better we really do um I do want to talk about fighting in the club because I've been in so many fights in the club, taking five girls at once. I mean, like, it happens. We need to talk about that. It happens. I look like I can't fight, but try me. Try me. You know, that type of thing. I've gotten in fights. I've gotten in one recently, actually. I ain't get fired. <laughs> It happens, but you have to protect yourself, girls, okay? And it's just not necessary. But when I get in fights, it's usually with someone that's not my race. And it's usually about stuff like hair, black women hair, or someone trying to prove that they're blacker than me. So that type of thing. In the white club, I usually get in a fight with a white girl. In the black club, black girls always won't money or a ride from me so like i'm just saying like it's something i don't know i'm like a sugar mama to the black girls i don't know do i look rich like um i'm sorry this is things that need to be talked about this is this is my experience though this is what happens to me people may not like it I'm, i don't want to come off as like i'm offending anyone i don't but this is what my experience has been I've tried to help girls a lot, and I end up getting hurt myself. Girls, have, I've given girls rides, tried to do this group trip thing. I've had girls steal clothes from me, stuff out of my car, like even so-called so-called dancer friends. Like I, I've tried. I'm not doing it anymore. So I'm solo. I'm a solo hoe. Okay. Um, but like I was saying, take dancing classes and stuff like that. Um get into a character you're not you so that's if you're like nervous and you feel like you have to drink don't do don't be that girl i never drink at work and if i if i did it was with someone that was already my friend who came in the club to chill with me so in case something did happen to me i knew i was safe with someone um but just uh yeah i think i'm running out of ideas or something um but stick to a character like I'm Mary, but when I'm dancing, I'm Jackson. And Jackson is like Medusa type of bitch. She's going in. And I absorb and I take the energy from my haters. The more haters I have, the better I do, actually. And I just go in. I feel like, nope. I put it, I turn it on. You turn your sexy on. Like, it's kind of fun. Um, anyway. Um... What did I say? I met my baby's dad and my ex-husband all in the strip club. So um, a lot of positives have come out of uh, working in, in this industry. It's changed my life. I've met rich guys. I've dated doctors. Um, I probably did things that like the average girl working at Walmart probably hasn't done or seen travel to little places and stuff. But um I think be becoming an entertainer opens up a lot of doors for you to see like uh, life in a different perspective. It's taught me how to be a better uh, entrepreneur or independent contractor or just businesswoman. You know, you get addicted to that being your own boss and not having people tell you when and when not to come around. See, in some states like North Carolina, they put you on a schedule though. They don't do that in in Florida. North Carolina, they put you on a schedule. You, are you going to be at work this week? This And you have to stick to that. They would like you to. I mean, even though you make it, they still have you on a schedule. They're a lot more professional when it comes to the strip club industry. Um, 
Yeah, so what else could I talk about when it comes to this? The whole fight, I'm gonna make a whole nother video about fighting in the club and story time because I got a lot of those. <sighs> so ask your questions with the fighting. Um, yeah, it's hard not to get in the fight because if you're making money, they're gonna hate your ass. And sometimes it's not always about how pretty you are. People need to remember that. It's about the full package. And men are looking for a full package. All right? Can you stimulate their mind? Can you uh, visually... Uh, are you visually appealing to them? Can you move your body? Um, do you have other interests and skills that, you know, like... Are you a great cook? Are you like a, a, I don't know. They think about just, you got to play with the guy's mind in a way. Like they, they just stimulate all aspects of them. Do you have a certain smell that they like? There's a little secret that I, I experiment that I've figured out too. Don't judge me for this. Okay. Please don't. But this is interesting. I'm very holistic. Okay. And when I was transitioning after having a child and breastfeeding, I decided to go natural with like no deodorant. So I started making my own, like, okay, like baking soda and stuff. And I noticed when I wear zero to minimal uh, perfume that I get more money and more guys, to be honest. I promise you. I don't know what it is. Is it pheromones or my natural scent comes out? I think almost 100% every time I make so much money, I promise you, if I don't have a whole lot of perfume or none, I don't even wear deodorant anymore when I dance. Like, sorry, I don't. That's just me. And I still got money. I own everything I have. You know, I'm serious. Like, talk about it. It's the truth. I don't know what it is. I just think it's just men's natural. They attract to a woman's natural body odor. You know? There's something about it. Um, that's something to consider. I've been telling my girlfriends. I'm like, don't put on all that perfume. They don't really like all that. Especially if they have a woman to go home to. I'm telling you. Uh, I've, I've even had a guy tell me. Um, he was like, you got on too, too much perfume. So I have to be mindful of that, but this here, this is my deodorant. I just stick somewhere. <laughs> it absorbs really quick. But yeah, I don't do that deodorant and stuff. And I, I experiment sometimes. Sometimes I wear uh, perfume, sometimes I don't. And I always make more money when I don't. I don't know what it is. But yeah, this is something to think about, ladies. Especially if you're never danced before. I don't know. These are just things I'm throwing out. I hope you find you guys find this uh, video interesting or informative. Um, I'm just getting started out anyway with these videos. Uh, Musa. Let me see what else I can talk about. I can make other videos if you all ask questions, I guess. And I could elaborate. Um, oh, I want to do a video on how my family found out. That's a whole nother story time. Oh, because I started dancing in my hometown. And that was a big mistake. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Seriously. It's something my family don't even talk to me about. I would like to talk to them about it. I have... Three sisters that I speak to openly about it. Well, and a brother. So four of them, it's not a shameful thing. But the rest of them are very prudish and religious and Jesus lovers. And Jesus don't like that. So it's awkward talking to them about it. But I'm open to talk to them about it. I don't care. I'll tell them some of my crazy stories. But I don't think they want to hear it. But anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is something, of course, you can't do forever. But apparently, this is something that some bitches do do forever. Let's just keep it real. I don't think anyone on YouTube is talking about it. They're old dancers. 
Bitches work with me 50, 60 years old. At least they look like it, okay? Seriously. Old. This is all they know. They don't know anything else. Okay? I tell one old lady that I said, look, you're not my mom. I'm a mom. I don't need you to try to be a mom to me. Okay? I'm not your child. This is a strip club. I'm grown. You're grown. Like, I'm serious. These old bitches are in there shaking their asses too. Saggy asses and saggy boobs. I'm serious. And that's why I listen to Dave Ramsey. And I've got a financial advisor. So these are things that you, you want to get a financial. This is a whole nother video I can make. You want to get a financial advisor. And it's, this, it don't cost you anything, really. Get you a financial advisor. Get you, uh, and I could tell, give you a company to go to. You financial advisor. You listen to Dave Ramsey on how to save your money. Because I, my motivation is to not be the old bitch in that strip club. Okay. I don't want to be, I, I'm doing it now so my daughter doesn't have to do it. Let's look at it like that, okay? I'm dancing now so my daughter doesn't have to do it. All right? Because my parents didn't set me up for success. But guess what? Her parents are going to set her up for success. All right? Um, I have other income, like child support. So I don't have to work so hard and slave, but still, um, I don't, I have a financial advisor, I've got life insurance. I've got Roth RRA, mutual funds investment, and I got my will, trust fund. All these things you have to take in consideration as a dancer, okay? You have to. You really do, okay? I know it's hard to prove how much money we make. It is. But if that's an issue and you need to prove how much money you make, like if you need to buy an apartment or something, you want to start to make sure you're depositing your money into the bank. But I know some people who don't want to put their money in the bank because every time they put it in the bank, it's withdrawal. They have these fees and money starts coming out and stuff. But yeah, um, here's my daughter. Another thing, if you're going to work in a strip club, you want to use weapons. And this is something that I forgot in my last video to put in there. Mace. Brass knuckles or something. Not to fight other girls with, but there are some crazy men that could come in there. And you want to just, you just never know. Some of the guys get crazy. And some of these clubs, they don't have the best protection, I noticed. Some of the men are just as scrawny as the women. Um. Oh, my God. Well, I guess I'm going to be cutting this video short. And I had to roll hair, too. Okay. I bring that one. Time. No mad mama. No mad I'm mama. I'm a nice mommy. I have my cousin every time. Oh, okay. <laughs> and my daddy too. Oh, and really? And my niece. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my two sisters. Yep. And my little sisters. Tell them your whole life story. Mm hmm. Okay. What? I had train. Okay. I ran a zombie. I was creepy. Whoa. My cousin hiding Whoa. from I'm them. I'm sorry. This video just. I'm hiding from them too. <laughs> this video just turned into something else. Okay. Okay. I hide. What I do? Hey. Oh. I ate my daddy up. Okay. I think we're going to go. Dream. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>